guys, you know, first and foremost, feeling for the guys to get that, you know, that monkey off their back, get that first win. Yeah, you know, getting the result we wanted right after, you know, playing a consistent brand of hockey in Western and finally doing the same thing here and getting the result, it's a big deal. And, uh, you know, playing against a good team, you know, it's two weeks in a row, Western St. Cloud, two top 10 teams. And, you know, it's going to continue to keep going with the strong competition. And uh, we got to make sure that we keep consistent with our play. Which one meant more to you to see from the bench the Friday game with seven goals or the comeback on Saturday? I think both. Uh, you know, I think it's you know, after not scoring a whole bunch of goals the previous two weekends and, and <clears throat> having a having a few goals by a lot of different players uh, contributing on Friday was was a big deal for us. And then, you know, uh, you know, we scored the first goal on Saturday night and we gave up three in the first period after that. But finding a way to come from behind and win a game, knowing you have the confidence to do that in the locker room and the and the, and the guys, the leadership in the locker room to do that. So, yeah, I think a little bit of both, and uh, like I said, it's it's nicer to leave the, lead the game from wire to wire. But at the end of the day, it's it's nice to know that you know there's belief in the locker room that you can come back to win a game. How does that affect the confidence overall with the team in the big picture coming off that weekend? Yeah, you know, I, and I, I've sat down with the guys this week <clears throat> on one-on-one -on -one meetings. I usually at the beginning of the year, midway through the year, and then at the end of the year, sit down individually and take some time and talk about <laughs> hockey, talk about non-hockey related things, but. You know, the general consensus with our group is, you know, our, our, our group is a confident group that, you know, we're res resilient with a bunch with a lot of resolve in our game. And and knowing that, you know, if you if you stay with the process and do what we do the, consistently, there's a good chance of winning games and and knowing, uh, you know, we got a stretch run of 10 games. So, yeah, for sure, it's a it's a situation where our guys feel confident right now and they want to keep, keep playing at that, that level. Well, you know what? It's 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 funny you mentioned that. Uh, you know, Western retained a lot of players. St. Cloud retained a lot of players. Fourth, fifth year, and the same thing with uh, with Omaha. You know, very experienced team. They didn't lose a whole lot, and uh, you know, so it's a situation where you know they've got a very skilled team. They've got a fast team, and and they they have a very good power play. So again, it's going to come down to very strong five on five. But the specialty teams are going to make a difference, and and we got to make sure we're sharp in those areas. And and I think you know, I don't think we were sharp Friday night, or no, sorry, Saturday night, first period. We weren't sharp in those areas. We got sharper as the game went on. And, and you know as well as I do that it has to be 120 minutes of five on five and, and sharp specialty teams to win games. And uh, that's a focus. Speaking of specialty teams, obviously, first power play is going to be switched up a little bit this week. Mm -hmm. uh, does it help that you guys got a couple looks at this, uh, you know, at CC when Sanderson was gone against Duluth? So you guys have yep. seen. Uh, yeah, and again, obviously, you know, we're not going to change a whole lot, you know, uh, with what kind of what we have. But obviously, Jake Sanderson being an integral part of the power play, you're going to have to put another guy there and, and, and have some looks, you know, accordingly. So, yeah, we, we did have some looks in CC when Sanderson was out. I think he was out two series in the first half, and we had other guys in those spots. But, you know, <clears throat> I think it's a situation where, you know, building chemistry with the four other guys on that, you know, with the, with the, with the new player up there, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Um, you know, our guys know all the content. Concepts and the, uh, I guess the uh, the looks and the the, the uh, protocol that we go through on a week to week basis to get there. So yeah, it's I don't think it'll be a big switch, big change. What is the fourth line, the, the Ness line, doing to play in the offense as much as it is? Well, and again, watching from the bench and, and watching the video after, it, it's very evident that they play with tenacity and speed. You know, there's not a lot of time when they don't have the puck. There's not a lot of time and space for the other team to to make plays and just taking away that time and space is a big deal and you know when they have the puck then I think they play a, like a, a simple hard brand of hockey of of retrieving pucks knowing where, where each other's are you know on the goals that we scored you know Nick uh, Portsy's gives it to Jake Sanderson uh, you know on the third goal and then you know on the low to high play uh, previous to that just just dispersing pucks and getting to net front and that's that's simple hard hockey and uh, and those guys are performing at a high high level right now. Well, again, I think it goes into the last question is, you know, obviously trying to get a lot of pucks on net, but with traffic, you know, I, I think that's, you know, when it really boils down to those are all cliches of trying to get offense in your game. And it's it's no no different. He's a very good goaltender. If he sees the puck, he's going to make saves. And it's a situation where we need to put pucks on him with some good net front traffic. And, and if there's rebounds available, have sticks on him right away. And, you know, I think it's a situation too where, um, you know, five on five play away from the puck is going to be a big deal, you know, in order to get a, Pucks on them and different things. You got to make sure that yeah, you work hard to get it back, and that's that's going to be a key. Jeff, 
you notice a difference in the atmosphere in the building with the students? Hundred percent. Yeah, I love our fans. I love I love the the hardworking people that pay their tickets to come to our game are loyal and they travel. They travel everywhere. But I'll tell you what, when you infuse our loyal and passionate fan base with our our, uh, our students in the student sections and the band, it, it creates an unbelievable environment. I know our players feel that. So I, I tell you what, there is an excitement and exuberance in the sta stands from Friday night puck drop that carried through the whole weekend, and it's a big deal. You saw what it was in Western Michigan with their uh, with their students. Like, it, it creates an, uh, something that's very special that you don't see in pro hockey.